Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now this is the second video that I'm doing this week. Last time I covered Dynamic, the new processor architecture from ARM, and today we're going to be looking at the new high-performance processor from ARM called the Cortex-A75. So what is the Cortex-A75 and what does it bring to the table? Well, let me explain. Now the Cortex-A75 is a processor that can be used inside of a new dynamic cluster. And that's what the last video was about. And it can be mixed and matched with the new Cortex-A55, which will be in my next video. Now the A75 is a high performance processor and it's inspired by and takes a lot from the Cortex-A73, but it's more than just a tweak. There's a whole bunch of new stuff in here that have really made this a great processor. So let's get down to performance. What do we see? Well, according to ARM, there's a 22% uh, performance increase oh, compared to the A73. And when you translate that also to things like floating point numbers, when you look at things like memory bandwidth, overall in, pro in uh, benchmarks like Geekbench, you may even see up to a 34% increase in the performance uh, scores that you get from the benchmarks. But the key thing about the A75 is it borrows the ideology from the A73 in that it can do sustained performance. Now, if you remember, the A73 was a great processor because unlike previous processors, it was capable of making a peak performance, but its peak performance was actually the same as its sustained performance. So what that meant is that when we get previous uh, uh, SOCs, you can maybe run a benchmark on it and, it and it gives you this great score. But if you ran that benchmark for a long time, then actually the processor performance would start to dive because it would start to heat up. And to maintain that heat dissipation uh, uh, specification so that the phone doesn't burn your hand uh, and so that the, 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 the processor can get rid of that heat, it would have to lower its performance. Now the A73 and now the A75 has this idea of that the peak performance and the sustained performance performance are almost exactly the same thing, which means that although we might just get good scores in the benchmarks, it means that as you're using the phone for long periods, playing games or you're web browsing, using it all through the day, you're actually going to find that performance remains the same. And that's one of the great things about the A73. And it's also a great thing about the A75. Now, as I mentioned in the dynamic video, because we've now got this gr greater single thread performance, there's also the opportunity for SOC makers to put in a single Cortex-A75 core amongst a whole bunch of Cortex-A55 cores, maybe even in a seven plus one configuration or in a two plus six configuration that will still actually have a very good silicon footprint, which means the costs will be good, but actually you'll get that great single thread performance, which really helps the UIs and certain types of applications feel much more responsive. Now here's a quick look at some of the micro architectural changes that we find in the A75 compared to the A73. The first thing to note is that we've gone from a two-way superscalar processor, which is what the A73 was, to a three-way superscalar processor. Of course, now we've got the L2 cache is per core, just because that's what is defined now as part of Dynamic, and that will also be true in the uh, Cortex-A55. Of course, it can be used in Dynamic, and of course, it comes with access to the L3 cache, which is across the whole cluster. For those who are interested, the L1 cache is now a 64K four-way associative cache, and there is a very good low latency on getting data from the L2 cache. The A75 also has a state-of-the-art branch predictor, which enables it to sustain the performance and keep those instructions flowing down the pipeline, even when there are type loop situations. Now, branch predictors aren't a very glamorous part of SOC design, but basically, if you think about it like this, when a program is running, the CPU is fetching the, the instructions from the memory, it's decoding them, and then it's executing them. And at some point, if the program jumps off to a different completely part, all those bits that have been fetched and started to be decoded previously are now invalid because the program is now running somewhere else. Now, a branch predictor works out where the program is going to jump to next and make sure the instructions are coming down the pipeline ready to execute even when the program has jumped off. Now, the A75 has got a new branch predictor. It's an improvement over the one that's in the A73, and that helps improve performance and keeps those instructions flowing down the pipeline. 
Now the A75 has got seven independent issue queues. Now what that basically means is that different types of instructions can be run in parallel. So if you're loading something from one part of memory and the next instruction is to load something else from another part of memory, well actually you can do those at the same time because you're not going to use both of them until maybe the third instruction. So they get happen at the same time and there are seven different queues of what can be executed at the same time. Again, that improves performance. Now, one of the things we hear a lot about today, of course, is AI and neural networks. Now, a lot of these things are not using long, complicated floating point numbers. They're actually finding that you can run these uh, neural networks using much less, lower precision, 16-bit floating point numbers. And in fact, there's even some types of uh, dot products and vector multiplications that can happen in just an 8-bit integer. And so ARM have done a lot of work to improve the performance of 16-bit floating point numbers and of these integer 8-bit integer dot products so that as we move more and more into using neural networks in our software, as we use more and more seeing AI assistance in our mobile phones, the underlying hardware is able to run the instructions needed to make those more efficient. And so there you have it, the Cortex-A75, the new high-performance core from ARM that will be used inside of a dynamic cluster along with the Cortex-A55. You've got a great improvement in the overall performance, maybe as much as 34% in a benchmark like Geekbench. You've got a great single thread performance increase, which means we might see this used in different types of combinations, no longer just that four plus four combination, but maybe a one plus seven, or we might see it in a different kind of configuration, maybe a five plus one. We'll have to see there's lots of options for CPU makers to use. We, of course, we've got the new, the continued sustained performance along with that increase in performance. And of course, there have been improvements throughout the microarchitecture, including the stuff we need for neural networks and for artificial intelligence. I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the second of four videos that I'm doing this week. The next video will be about the Cortex A55. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that bell icon so that you get a notification whenever we publish a new video. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.